An embarrassing loss for the Detroit Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. Today is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. I am, of course, your always happy host, Scott Bentley. Thanks for making Locked on Tigers your first listen every single day because we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. That's including YouTube. And we're here today to discuss a baseball game that was definitely played. What the hell just happened? I Look. L- look what? I don't know. What are we doing? I have no clue what just happened. I really don't. It was horrible. Um The Detroit Tigers lose this one to the Minnesota Twins in Minnesota. Uh, Final score, 5-4. to If you didn't watch, you missed a doozy. You really did. I highly recommend you don't watch it, though. I really, uh, if you're a Tigers fan, I really recommend you don't watch this game. Wow. You know what the craziest part of this game is? The craziest part is that it doesn't matter who you blame. You're right. Isn't that wild how that's even possible? It literally doesn't matter. You could blame anybody and you would be correct. That's mind-blowing. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. If you want to throw some blame at the umpire for the clear strike to start off Gregory Soto's outing that was called a ball for some reason, yep, he deserves a little bit of blame. If you want to blame Gregory Soto for throwing eight straight balls to start off an outing, one of them was a strike, as just talked about, but walked two batters on eight pitches to start off his outing. You want to throw him some blame? Sure, I don't believe that it should be fully on him. I don't really believe any of it. It should be fully on anyone. This was a team effort. We all stood in a circle, grabbed hands, and and started singing Kumbaya, and, and really did this together as a team. We really did. It's remarkable how how it, it was just a team effort. You know, everybody wants, there's no I in team. We, we want to do everything together. Well, congratulations, because the only person that scored any runs tonight was one person, right? I in team, Javi Baez had all the RBIs and, um, the team as a, as a whole dropped this one in the ninth. So there you go. The team went down with the ship all together. Locking arms. It's remarkable. If you think that Erod should have had a better start, you know what? I don't think Erod really get, gets any of this blame. We were winning the game at a point after he had pitched, after he had gotten pulled. I'm not going to ask for too much more uh, out of very many starters, right? So, should he could he have pitched better? Yes, he he could have pitched better. But people comparing him to Jordan Zimmerman, you are off your rocker. You have lost all your marbles. You might not have even had any marbles to start off with. That's absolutely asinine. Back-to-back quality starts. We are four starts into this dude's Tigers career. Take a breather. Now, with everything else that happened in this game, I'm not going to tell you to take a breather. You have every right to be upset. Every right to be upset. That's a that's an 
inexcusable product that was just put in front of us for the ninth inning. Inexcusable all around. You want to blame Robbie Grossman? Yep, he deserves some blame. 98%. I feel confident in saying that 98% of corner outfielders make that catch. And I, I oddly enough, the, the 2% that don't might all be Tigers because this corner outfield defense is atrocious all around. One of them's a former catcher that also deserves some of the blame today. A, a pretty hefty amount. I, I think most people would agree. The other happens to be our best bat at the moment, so you can't even fault him, but he's not a good defender. And the third one didn't make the catch. It was hit to him, and he's the one that I'm talking about. I mean, goodness, man. What are we doing? There's so, it's it's just, it's, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So the point is, don't get in fights. Don't don't fight each other. Fan base should we we shouldn't fight each other. We're all on the same team. Just they were all on the same team tonight. And they all, like I said, they all together as a unit went down in absolute flames. Don't fight each other because you're you're both right. You're all right. It's this person's fault. It's this person's fault. You're both right. Everybody's fault. You get a car. You get a car. Oprah Winfrey. It's everybody's fault. My goodness. Okay. The offense is also their fault. No, not okay. We're not done. The offense was terrible. Still Terrible. Remained terrible. It has been terrible. And I've been preaching patience. And honestly, by the third segment, once I get all of this out of me, I'll probably preach patience again because I think it's important. And I think it's true. And we're not to May yet. And and, and the season's not over. 16 games in. It's not. We haven't even hit the 20-game played mark. We got over 140 baseball games left. But we have not seen a viable offensive product. Well, we, we've saw one. We've seen one. And, and it w- didn't even really matter because, A, we shut the other team out. And, B, no one cared that day because Miguel Cabrera made history. So no one even cared. The one time the offense showed up, nobody gave a damn. And then immediately... Without hesitation. It wasn't even like they got a day off. Within hours of scoring 13, the offense was back to being brutally terrible. Jamer Candelario. Still think he's going to be fine, but can't avoid it. He's been not good. It's been rough. He had a couple of hard-hit balls this game. Doesn't change the fact that his production has been atrocious so far Jonathan Scope put the ball in play a little bit right both of those guys got knocked down in the lineup Spencer Torkelson I thought he looked pretty good at the plate Miguel Cabrera didn't look great I I, I guess he gets a free pass maybe because 3k just happened I don't know man this was all terrible the offense was a train wreck outside of Javier Baez Thank goodness he's back because without him, we'd have two less wins than we already do. We have two more losses than we already do is probably how I should have grammatically worded that. What an absolute joke. And I'm sure that they agree. This isn't me. This isn't, I'm I'm not waking anybody up to this. 
right? This isn't me going, oh, shocker, everybody. You should be pissed. I'm sure everybody's pissed. I know the fan base is. I see what everybody says on there. But I I'm sure all the players are pissed. I'm sure Hinch chewed somebody out. I'm sure that the entire clubhouse is fuming. That doesn't change the fact that we should be too. What a joke. Okay. All right. We have to do, we do have to give some analysis at some point here, Bentley. We do. Unfortunately, we, we do. Let's, as I said to Gregory Soto after a second walk, and I, I wish it wasn't this way, but at some point, you do have to throw a strike. At some point, I, I do have to do some analysis. First, I'm going to take a deep breath. And we're going to talk about athletic greens because I actually really like athletic greens. And this is not a, a normal, uh, very, this isn't a scripted thing. This isn't something that, that I have to read to, you know, word for word. This is truly a partner with the company, with the network, with Locked On that I use every single day. And Athletic Greens sent all of the hosts a box full of their supplements, full of their vitamins and, and minerals. And you just mix it with water every morning. And that's how you start your day. You do it on an empty stomach right when you wake up in the morning before you eat breakfast. And you, you just mix it in with eight to 10 ounces of water and that's it. And it's every vitamin and mineral your body needs in a 24 hour period, all in a glass of water to start your morning. And it is awesome. I am not even kidding. I use this every day. I have, I re-upped my subscription over the weekend, actually. My, uh, my, my free trial for being a cool host ran out and I re-upped that baby because uh, it feels awesome. It, it is incredible. The, the change and, and, and how your, your body feels, your digestion, whatever, it, 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 it's an immediate difference, an immediate change, and, and you can tell right away. And it's awesome. It really is awesome. I'm such a huge fan. Uh, it, it's a health, it's lifestyle friendly. Doesn't matter if you're gluten free, dairy free, vegan, uh, keto. Uh, it, it accommodates everybody, and it is everything your body needs on a daily va basis. It, it's incredible, and I highly recommend it to everybody. Like I said, I will continue to re up my subscription. I think every uh, Every purchase you make gives you a month full of supplies. Usually I'm going to keep re-upping it every month because it's fantastic. So, and also to make it easy, athletic greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free tra travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. That's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back, everybody, to segment two here at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next listen, be sure to check out the Locked On Now podcast. They have all of our recaps. We do those recap videos as a network after every game. They have all of them in the show. It's very, very cool. Uh, analysis from every local expert gives you a nice daily recap of everything that's happening takes fans through the season like no other network it's free and available wherever you get your podcast just like we are including youtube okay uh i don't know what's gonna happen from here on out I i'm a i'm a loose cannon currently that's a joke man that really is a joke and and it it's it's frustrating uh, on so many levels. It's frustrating because I know we're coached better than that, first and foremost. Maybe not foremost, but first thing that came to my mind, I guess. We're coached better than that. We, uh, we have one of the best coaching staffs in the game of baseball. We have comfortably the best coaching staff in this division. There's no excuse for that. And... This is something that we were told we were going to hang our hat on. This is something that we told we were addressing. This is something we told that we would be improved on. If you listen to us in the offseason, 
we talked about the team defense, right? We did a whole show about it. And then we brought it up again right when the lockout ended. And we were ranking where the Tigers fall within the division at every facet of the game, defense being one of them. But earlier, during the lockout days, we did a whole show on team defense. And this team has been so horrible defensively for years now. For like the better part of half a decade at this point. And to just see it be such a train wreck. Today, to, this game is my breaking point, clearly. Very clearly to everybody. I have I have lost it, right? But the whole season, through me preaching patience, and again, I will continue to do so. Through all of that, the defense as a whole this year has been atrocious. This is not new. This was a nice highlighter, a nice pink highlighter. You know those huge, you go to high school, middle school, elementary school, however old you are, college, you go to school and you always see that one person that just has a massive neon pink highlighter. That's what this was. It was highlighting a mistake and, 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 uh, and an area that has been an absolute train wreck for this team for the first three weeks of the season. This isn't new to anybody. None of this is new to anybody. Gregory Soto having command issues? <gasps> Not new. Something he needs to work on. Some I still believe in the dude. Clearly, I, I still risk looking like a clown every day on Twitter. But it, it's very clearly something he still needs to work on. Erod, he had mm, one rough inning and then one bad pitch outside of that inning. You know what's crazy? I'm pretty sure I said that about his last start. Did I not? Can someone double check? I... It was either him or Scooble, but one of them, I said that almost word for word. One bad inning and then one bad pitch outside of the bad inning. I'm, I swear it was Erod. Regardless, he gave you a quality start. What's the point of the quality start? Does your starting pitcher put you in a position to win a baseball game? This team was winning innings after he had gotten pulled. And he went six. It's not like that. that's reality. And he went two innings and gave up 10 and we just scored 12. So he put you in a position to win. Are there things he could tighten up? Yes. Okay. He missed arm side a lot this game. He did. The framing did not do him any favors behind the plate. And the umpiring did not do him very many favors behind the plate. But you could say that about a lot of people. We're not going to use umpires as an excuse. Okay. We're not. I, I really don't like doing it at, at like ever. It's one of my least favorite things. Okay. So we're just going to put that to the side. Receiving was not very well. It was not very good. Well, whatever. Nothing was received. Well, not very much was received. Well, I should say. And he was missing arm side a lot, especially on, on his fastball. That being said, he also still was, was pretty solid all around. And again, we were winning after he got pulled. The changeup, I thought was a pretty effective pitch. The four-seam fastball, his comfortably his most thrown pitch every outing, his bread and butter, I thought it was a pretty effective pitch. Was a strike in some capacity almost 50% of the time. Got cranked once. Uh, the changeup also got cranked once. Made some mistakes didn't make enough mistakes to lose us an outing. Right? Loss, not putting it on Erod. Alex Lang comes in. Looks phenomenal. Looked fantastic. I, I mean, over half of his pitches all around were either called strikes or swings and misses. All Everything was fantastic. One ball was put in play, and it was very weak contact. He was stellar. Michael Fulmer, when I tell you that I thought that fly out to Byron Buxton, when I, I think Castellani tweeted, he did because I replied to it. Castellani tweeted this too. I thought 
that that Byron Buxton home run went 947 feet. I really thought it did. I turned around. I went, well, I, I set an expletive, threw my remote, turned around, looked the other way. And then when I turned back around, I was confused as to why the score didn't change. I thought he cranked it, just got under it. And, and besides that one pitch, it was a pretty effective outing for Michael Fulmer. But that pitch is definitely not where he wanted it. And then Gregory Soto, we all get to him. We all know what happened. We all know what happened. He see, he did, he did. seemed to have lost his edge, and, and he seemed very uncomfortable after the horrific call to start off his outing. Is that an excuse? No. You're the closer. You are the high leverage guy. We've been told for a year now, you're the high leverage guy. You were publicly named the high leverage guy in spring. Publicly named the closer in spring. And it's a one run game in the ninth. This is you. It's not an excuse to, to have whatever the hell happened afterwards to, to occur. It's not. But you can sprinkle a little bit on it. I mean, my goodness. He he, he made some good pitches after he started off. <laughs> after the eight straight balls, he had some good at-bats. Like, that's, you, that's so frustrating to even say. I don't even want it. That feels gross coming out of my mouth. Oh, after I walked two straight batters on eight straight pitches, I thought I, he recovered pretty nicely. Who cares? You still did the first part, and, and, and you're the high-leverage dude. So, yeah, that, and then he recovered pretty nicely, I thought. He, may, he hit some spots. He made some pitches. Miguel Sano hit what should have been a pretty routine flyout. Nope. Then the ball gets back into the infield, and the Twins do make, make look like a, a little league team running the bases. And then Eric Haas gets the ball. He's trying to calm down. Eric Haas gets the ball, and I, I don't know. I don't know. Why throw the ball? And look. <laughs> you know what? Let's talk about Bilt Bar. Let's do it. Let's talk about Bilt Bar, eh? Uh, you got to try the Puffs. If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Bilt Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat. Dang it. And they're covered in 100% real Chocolate, a hundred percent real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite. They have some incredible flavors: yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. These are going to be your new favorite. All Bill Bars are covered in a hundred percent real chocolate. Hundred percent real chocolate. I've said it a million times. You're you're gonna remember. Hundred percent real chocolate. Most built bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You compare that to a candy bar, usually it's about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs. These things come in crazy good flavors. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious. All new flavors are coming out all the time. They think a flavor might be good. They'll make it. It will be delicious, and it will be good for you. At Built Bar, they care about the taste. They're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then they make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So go to built.com right now. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off of your order. It's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. In through the nose, out through the mouth. That's what my therapist tells me. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every day. We're back for segment three. Uh, Eric Haas gets the ball. Why throw it? And and I understand that if he just makes a good throw there, as he probably does 99 times out of 100, nobody's going around asking. 
why'd you throw the ball there? Like it, it's not so dumb. It's only a dumb decision because he threw the ball into left field. Like he, he, he shortened the distance. He, he made what should be a relatively safe throw and it wasn't. And you know what? That happens sometimes. But, but if you really wanted to guarantee to get, that you got an out, you don't need to throw the ball there. You don't. You really don't. And, and again, I don't like the revisionist history thing, but the fact of the matter is, if you run the ball to third, that's a 100% chance the ball makes it to third and you're going to get an out. And if you throw the ball to third, there's a chance you, you throw it in to Dave, who's in row three behind the dugout. That's just how it is. And then that, then that's objective. Goodness gravy. So, the offense didn't show up. Javi Baez showed up. The rest of the offense, not really. Nope, not really. Kind of got shut down again today. We're one Javi swing. Well, was one Javi swing away from only getting one run in this game and not even getting to the ninth to be in a situation where we could epically and, and catastrophically just embarrass ourselves in front of every single fan base in the entire country. But we were two Javi Baez swings away from just getting shut out and getting embarrassed in a different way. Less embarrassing, because teams get shut out all the time, but still embarrassing. The defense has been a train wreck all year. The offense has been a train wreck up to this point all year. The bullpen has actually been really good. And I don't think that this loss is, well, what am I even saying, man? It, it, this loss isn't entirely on anybody. Like I said at the beginning, they they really messed it up together. They really did the thing all at once. Unreal. Unreal. The silver lining. There always is. Right? Always is. In anything in life, there always is. Silver lining and, and beauty in everything. Javi Baez looked fantastic, and that's why you go get a star. That's why you go spend money on a star. And it's game 16. And I think it's totally fair for you to go, you've been pre preaching patience this whole time. I'm done with it. That's your that that's that's your decision and honestly I probably support it. Go for it. Dig your heels in. Let it be known as a, as a Pistons legend Isaiah Thomas would say. I, you don't you don't have to be patient. You don't have to be patient period for anything for starters. I think you probably should be sometimes. You don't have to be patient for anything. You also don't have to be patient when last year April was terrible and the rest of the season was good. Then we went in to an off season and we added a lot. We were a team that just fell short of 500 and added five impact players. Maybe six, depending on your opinion of some people. And to show up and and really look very much like April from a year ago is it's it's so disheartening. And that's just what sucks, really at the end of the day. That's what sucks. It sucks that we are copy and pasting an April from a year ago 
when last April was terrible and this year's team is totally different and has way bigger names on it, way more highly regarded players, way more highly regarded prospects, big money players. We spent in free agency. We had all this and the April looks the exact same. And no, the season is not over. It's not. Don't don't be the, the person that that freaks out after game 16 and says the you know this team's going to lose 100 look at what just happened at the end of the day it's still one game but it highlighted so many issues that we <clears throat> just still seem so f- far away in this present moment from from being able to overcome you have every right to be frustrated Go be frustrated. Whoever you blame, you're right. You can blame me for all I care. I I post the Gregory Soto. It's always funny to me when people are like, there's no way you're posting this right now. Like, like, why would you do that? Like, for those of you who have been following me for a couple of years, I post that picture every single time that man leaves the bullpen. Doesn't matter the score. Doesn't matter the situation. I do it every single time. So, deal with it. I I don't know what to tell you. So, you can blame me. He's the kid that posts the stupid meme and it jinxed us. Sure. Whose fault isn't it is a shorter list than whose fault it is. Train wreck. Dumpster fire. You have every right to be frustrated. You also should probably keep in the back of your mind that it's game 16. It's a fine line to walk. I don't think I'm doing a very good job of walking it right now. I think I'm all over the place. I'm sporadic. I'm, I'm, (laughs) there's a lot going on in between the ears right now for me. So I, I'm not saying I'm the example furthest from that what i am saying is that it's it's possible for for everything to be true basically it's possible that that this is embarrassing and we should all be upset while also it's still remaining possible that it is game 16 and we could sweep the dodgers win out the rest of the month climb our way back to 500 be the first place team in a terrible division currently and, and be on our way the rest of the year and have a competitive season. Everybody forgets about this game in a month. That's also very real and very possible. It all can be true. That's pretty much all I got. Oh, actually a couple more things. House cleaning stuff really quick. Andrew Chafin's back did not pitch in the train wreck dumpster fire game, but is back, is healthy. Uh, That's awesome. Love that dude. Like, he doesn't give a damn about baseball. Nights like tonight, I envy that. He he doesn't give a damn about, like, MLB, I should say. He doesn't give a damn about Major League Baseball. He just knows that, that he likes his job. He likes going out there and pitching. He happens to be really good for at it. And we'll just do it for whoever signs his paychecks. And we'll do it really well. Just wants to go back to his farm at the end of the day. I genuinely think, I would like to keep tabs on this. When Andrew Chafin retires, I would bet pretty heavy money using betonline.net that he will not watch a single Major League Baseball game for the rest of his life after he retires. I think that that might even be minus money. Love him. He'll be back. That'll be a huge plus for an already really solid bullpen up to this point in the season. Um, Oh, and then where I screwed up, uh, I think it's important to to acknowledge mistakes just as it's important to acknowledge uh, and and praise successes. I totally forgot what year it was. I straight up wrote for a different website that I uh, write for and make content for. I, I straight up wrote an, an article when we did the scope extension, right? Uh, that it was a two-year deal and ended at the end of 2023, et cetera. Um, and 
for whatever reason, this whole season up to this point, I've been saying it's on an expiring deal. That's just not true. So thank you guys for, for calling me out. I absolutely deserve it. I was very much wrong. Uh, and I, like, I, I, I knew, but for whatever reason, I just like thought this was 2023 apparently did not think it through enough to catch my own mistake. So, uh, I don't think it changes anything I said though. I don't think like, oh, Jonathan scope expires next year. So that gives him a longer leash this year. That's the context in which the last time I brought it up was personally, I don't think that changes anything. Um, yeah, that's a whole different conversation. Scope and Candelario. We, that's, that's. Too much going on, too much in my brain. That's all I want to talk about. I'm going to cut it off before I end up going on for like a two-hour-long show. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen Locked On MLB. Host Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Um, He had one earlier this week, I believe on Sunday, that I was a – guest on that i was his co-host on for the show for the episode we talked all about miguel cabrera so be sure to go check that out um comerica the tigers everything super cool guy knows knows ball very well and is always very fun to talk to um i think that's all i got locked on mlb i th- feel like i want to say something else regarding that that's okay peace and love everybody going to therapies so cool. My therapist is going to learn so much about baseball this week. It's going to be crazy. All right. I'm, I'm going to get my therapist on Tiger's Twitter by the end of, by the end of the week, because she, she's, she's going to hear about it. She's going to hear about the game of baseball this Friday for, for my weekly appointment. Let me tell you. Okay. Peace and love. Other members of your own fan base are not the enemy. That being said, it's okay to be frustrated. Okay. All we got's each other, baby. We gonna be all right. Peace and love going to Therapy's Dope, and I will catch y'all tomorrow, hopefully recapping a much better game. Look how calm I am now. Calm after the storm. That's that that's me. You heard of calm before the storm? Scott Bentley. Calm after the storm. All right, I'm actually gonna let you go by your day. Peace out. Go Tigers.